Hey y'all, hey! I am Chelsea of Knitting Tipsy, and welcome to episode one <laughs> of the Knitting Tipsy vlog. Cheers! I say one with that question mark in my voice because I've done some other vlogs here on my channel, but this is kind of a revamping, a reimagining of what the Knitting Tipsy YouTube channel will look like going forth. Um, I'm hoping to do a more well-rounded vlog once a month, um, consisting of a lot of the things that I think um, are part of Knitting Tipsy. So we're going to talk a little self-love, mental health. We're, of course, going to talk cocks and mocks. Uh, I have a recipe for you for both delicious January cocktails. And we're also going to talk about yarny things because, of course, we are maybe some smutty, smutty books. Maybe, maybe. And lastly, I am going to show you some fun things in my life. So I'm a little nervous. This is something new, um, hence my emotional support cocktail. Mm -hmm. um, but let's go ahead and get started. All right, so actually what we're gonna start with first of all, because I know I'm gonna get questions about it and I sometimes forget later on, is what I'm wearing. So both of these garments are my designs. If you didn't know, I like to make things that are booby. <laughs> that show off the decolletage. Um, that is my favorite feature. So a lot of the um, patterns and designs that you will see for me usually have plunging necklines. They're a little bit risque. They're perfect for wearing on your next beach vacation. So the top that I am wearing here, this is my boobiful bralette. It is a knit design, but it does have some crochet techniques. If you don't know how to crochet at all, don't worry, I will walk you through. They're very simple and I think they give it just the perfect finishing touch. My other garment that I'm wearing, this is my Sexy Gone Cardi. This is a crochet cardigan. Um, and both of these patterns are available on knittingtipsy.com and on Ravelry. The other cool thing that I'm wearing are these gorgeous rose quartz um, triangular geometric earrings. These are from Stacy of Ba Humble. Stacy always has really cool jewelry and stitch markers and um, knitting and crochet notions. Make sure to check her out. I wore my rose quartz today so that I can feel a little of the self self love vibes coming in. Speaking of those self love vibes, um, let's talk first of the year. It is January 4th. January 4th, on this day of filming, I'm hoping to post this next week, give myself a whole week to edit. Um, if you followed me on Vlogmas, that was a challenge. I was learning a new computer, a new editing software, new everything. So I'm giving myself a whole week to leisurely edit. And I feel like the self-love and the slowdown pace that's what my January is all about. You may have heard of Word of the Year. I first learned about it, I think like two years ago, three years, three years ago. And I have been choosing a Word of the Year since then because the New Year's resolution thing, they just don't work for me. They don't, I think it's wrong to want to change so many things about ourselves. Um, I've worked very hard on my journey of mental health and self-love to like the person <laughs> that I am. So the idea of making big resolutions to like change who you are, be a new person. I'm like, yeah, but I worked so hard to love her. Like I'm, I'm good with who I am. That doesn't mean that I don't want to treat myself better. Um, be the best version of me, like live up to my highest self. Of course not. Of course I want to do that. But, um, I'm just not super into resolutions that, like, if you don't miss, then you feel like shit about yourself. I'm a Capricorn, so, you know, uh. if I don't hit a goal, the world ends. But I loved the idea of a word of the year. It's a focus word for your year. And yes, you, you can set goals for yourself and you can do those things, but it's more a check-in, a reminder, a motivation 
of things that you want to manifest and that you want to happen in your life. So last year, I chose courage. I wanted to be more courageous. I really felt like my anxiety, not that it was holding me back, but that I had a very particular view of myself living with anxiety and depression and that there were things I couldn't do. And talking with my therapist, um, I realized it's not that I can't do them. I absolutely can. It's just that anxiety and depression might be coming along with me for the journey. So I challenged myself last year with this word courage to do things courageously, to live bravely with anxiety and with depression. Some days that was like brushing my teeth. <laughs> that was courageous enough for the day on the really hard days. Other days I really tried to push myself out of my comfort zone. Driving anxiety is something that I really struggle with. So um, I took some early morning beach trips by myself, drove myself out to Cocoa Beach. Um, I was always so proud on those mornings that I'd get there and like, oh, I did it. And um, I did even bigger things. I said yes to knit stars. I was a season eight knit star last year. And my, um, not a, oh, my anxiety, yes, but my imposter syndrome, whew, like that was, that was rough to overcome it. Thank God for therapy. The imposter syndrome was real, but reminding myself that I am actually talented and pretty awesome. And I do deserve, do you see this face? I'm like, Oh, should I say that out loud? But we should toot our own horns and we should be proud of ourselves. And, um, I did deserve that and it was wonderful. So that was something very courageous that I did as well. 2023, my year of courage. What the hell was I going to do for 2024? Um, honestly, I was tired from being so brave. Um, and I gave myself permission at the end of last year to slow down, to not force myself to do more and more and more. Like Knit Stars ended and it was kind of like, okay, what should I do now? I, I need to do something now. I need to make some. I need to end the year on a bang. And instead of doing that, I ended the year softly and gently and that really made me realize that I wanted more of that in my life because it was missing. And I see so much progress that I've made over the last several years and last year, but there, you know, some things are a little uneven. So um, my word of the year is alignment. I want to find more balance in my life, more softness, more ease but not too much softness and ease. I still wanna be creative and feel challenged and push myself a little, but finding that alignment, finding that balance in my life. Alignment, I also feel means going with the flow. Um, I mentioned before, I am a Capricorn. I feel safest when I can control everything. Um, you know, the world would be great if they, it could all just go according to my plan. That would be wonderful. Um, but that's not how it works. I am trying to let go a little more and roll with the punches. And whenever life throws a curveball, not panic. And maybe instead see, see the silver lining and adjust myself more fluidly. That's what I'm hoping for. And in so doing both of those things, finding more balance, finding more ease, a little bit of challenge, and also going with the flow, I'm hoping to be more present in my own life, to romanticize my life a little bit. Um, even the, the simple things, the dull moments. For example, buying myself really cute cocktail glasses just for sipping cocktails at home because... Why not? Why not enjoy the little things, right? I plan to romanticize my life a little bit more, make make even the little things more indulgent and the big things, you know, be the fucking main character of my own life. That is my little spiel there about the start of the year. And if you're feeling that way too, please know we are actually in the dead of winter. The winter solstice was <laughs> December 21st. If you aren't feeling it, that's that's probably pretty normal. I've seen a lot of things lately um, from a witchy perspective uh, talking about waiting until spring to set goals and to, if you want to set resolutions, 
spring is renewal, spring is rebirth. That is the time for, you know, becoming a new or, you know, choosing some new fresh starts for yourself. Um, we often feel like I get the urge to spring clean and I don't even like cleaning, but you know that it's just that urge to start new things. So if you're not feeling it right now and you just want to be cozy and warm and nap more, I think that's a great goal. I think you should do that. And I also think you should remember that you are really and truly wonderful just as you are. And it's great to want to be the best version of yourself, but don't turn your back on the person that got you here already because they're pretty badass and amazing. And I'm so glad to have you here. If you feel like creating a word of the year, or if you already have created a word of the year, I would love to know about it. You can pop it into the comments and we can chat about it because I think it's, I think it's cool to see where people's focus are for each year. Next up, Cox and Mox. I will never get over that term. It makes me so happy. Um, I first discovered it on Instagram, then started seeing it on Pinterest, and now I feel like I can't get away from Cox and Mox. <laughs> what a problem to have. I really wanna make for you guys every month a fun cocktail and mocktail recipe for those um, teetotalers in our midst. Um, I'm glad I didn't talk too long in the last section because I still have, uh, my, my mocktail hasn't completely melted yet. So I filmed these earlier. We are making this month, um, neither of these really have names and I probably should have, have named them. <laughs> but this one I'm just calling the birthday girl drink. It is super easy. You can make it drunk. You can make it for a bunch of people. It is sparkly. It is delicious. The birthday girl drink. That is our cocktail. It is champagne based. Of course it is because we all deserve to celebrate our birth. And our mocktail recipe, um, it's a pink drink. It's a pink drink. That's the name of it. It's a pink drink. Um, this is a really fun sorbet cocktail. Um, I know it's January and maybe I should have picked something warmer and more exciting, but January to me is my birthday month. Like, that's what it is. It is a month to celebrate because I was born. And so are some really other awesome people because Capricorns rock. But anyways, um, I'm gonna go ahead and pop in the video to show you how to make these two drinks.
You actually don't need the spoon once it gets melty. Oh no. And truly the, the garnish, <laughs> it's just for decoration. But boy, is it cute, isn't it? Anyways, I hope you enjoy those. Um, the birthday girl drink, the more cotton candy you add, the sweeter it will be. I just think it's it's a little fun extra thing to put in your glass and really you're just drinking champagne. One of my mom's best friends, she passed away, oh, several years ago, but she was the most glamorous person that I knew. And I remember when I was 16, um, I was not allowed to drink underage and I didn't. <laughs> you wouldn't have known me then. I was a different person. I remember going to a party at her house, like with my mom, and she poured me like a tiny, tiny little taste. And my mom's like, okay, you can have a tiny taste. And she put it in a glass and she told me that you should always have champagne in your fridge, um, no matter what, because you never know when a friend's gonna come over with some great news or when you need to celebrate a Tuesday. And I just thought that was great. And there's always a bottle of champagne in my fridge. I mean, we're clearly celebrating something more important, but still always keep bubbles in your fridge. All right, before we get into the yarny content, I do want to have a little book chat. Um, it is amazing to see how trends and, I don't know if trend is the right word, but just I don't, fad doesn't feel right because it's not a fad, but seeing how many yarny people are also book people, but not just also book people, like it's becoming part of their brand or it's becoming part of their online persona. Um, and it's a very particular kind of reader. I feel like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some beautiful Instagram accounts out there that are yarn and books and they aren't romance novels, but I, it, it's astounding to me. Like, Back in the day, in college and right after college, I can remember being embarrassed to tell people like some of the books that I was reading. Or if I found out that they also liked like smutty romance, I'd get so excited like, oh my god, because I felt like I could finally talk about it. But if you told people like, oh yeah, I love like Harlequin romances, or I love romanticy books, or I love, you know, people would kind of look down on it like, oh, well, that's not literature. Like, that's not you know, good reading. Um, and one of the first people who changed my mind, not changed my mind, who showed me the light, who let me know that it was okay to be a romance reader was Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts. Um, I remember when she told me like, oh my gosh, I love smut. I love romance books. And she was telling me she was an arc reader and a beta reader for different authors. I'm like, what the hell is that? And I was so excited to learn about it. And the more I think people start felt had started feeling okay a couple years ago about it, I, I really feel like there's been an explosion lately, um, which is great because I mean, I've been, I've been reading smut for years and I can finally chat with people about it. First smut book, I, sorry, side, side story. The first smut book I ever read. I was 11 and Addie Young, Addie, I don't know if you'll ever, ever watch this, but Addie Young came to my birthday party and I think her mom had let her pick out a book at the, I think it was a, oh, what was the name of it? Not Barnes, it wasn't Barnes and Noble, Walden's? Is that, was that the name? I'll correct it here if it's not. But anyways, um, I don't think her mom looked to see what book she got me. <laughs> or or maybe her mom was just really cool. Um, but yeah, so I was opening gifts and I don't think my mom saw me open that gift either. I was having like a girl sleepover party. Um, and I was excited. I loved to read as a kid. I devoured books. Um, not, not these kind, but... <laughs> Just loved them. So I was like, oh, how cool. And there was a very attractive cowboy and a, a disheveled um, cowgirl <laughs> on the cover. And I remember being like, wow. Um, and it was, it was a Harlequin romance. And, um, you know, the start of the story, there was like the the lusty looks and everything. And I was like, I don't, I don't know if I should be reading this. And then it got into some of the, the good stuff. And I was like, oh but I wanted to know what happened. So I didn't tell my mom. And then I took that book to school and at recess, cause I was only in fifth grade. <laughs> I 
every day at recess, I had like a gr group of six girls and we sat there. <laughs> I read chapters aloud from it. And we tried to figure out what the fuck they were talking about. It was amazing. Um, I corrupted a lot of my fifth grade class that year. Um, but yeah, that was my first one. It was called Territorial Bride. If I can find a cover photo of it, I'll put it here. Um, I wonder if I still have it somewhere. I don't know, but I probably read that book a hundred times. That was my very first, very first Slimut book. And then I started buying them for myself when I was 15, 16, getting them from like the library when I could. Um, and I would hide them from my mom because I didn't want her to know <laughs> I was reading these, these, I don't want to say dirty because at the time I thought they were dirty. You know, that's the, the good girl, how we were raised, many of us millennials, but they were just, oh, they were so good and sultry and wonderful and spicy. Um, and it started my love affair with them. And then once I got to college and I didn't have to hide the books anymore, <gasps> oh, I, I was the girl you went to and I found other girls who were into it and like I had the books, but I still never really openly admitted it. I was just, I was embarrassed. I thought it wasn't real literature, but thank you to Abby. Thank you to Goliath Frog Crafts for letting me know because there is an amazing, my eyes, I, I didn't even realize some of the subgenres of spicy, spicy smut that there are. And the more I read, the more I want to read. Like you cannot like tell me about a book genre that exists that I'm not going to get excited about in the smut world. I'd be like alien, monster, <laughs> Omegaverse. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, baby. I still do hold a special place in my heart for like historical romance because that's what I started with. But I would say the type of smut that I read these days is mostly romanticy. I do love fairy porn. Like, oh, God, the escapism. And if you haven't read the Akatar series, um, Throne of Glass is not smut. There is very few, like, really explicit scenes in there. Um, you don't even get to any for the first several books. Ugh, but it's still amazing. And I would still consider it. Um, Definitely fantasy. Um, I don't even know if romanticy is the right category for it. Like, it's fantasy. Um, and there's lots of romance. And, but, it's, I don't know, it's a little different. Tell me if you agree or disagree if you've read the Throne of Glass series. Um, I've never read Crescent City. Like, these are just, I feel like a lot of people, Sarah J. Mass, it was like their first foray into, um, romanticy. Um, but those books are amazing. Um, From Blood and Ash by Jennifer Armentrout. I think I'm saying that right. That's another great series to get into that has some really good spice. Um, book one's kind of slow burn. Book two and three and four. I can't remember how many books there are in that series. Um, quite spicy. But um, then there's, there's, oh, I, let me stop myself because I could go on and on and on about all this. I will say you're going to want to make sure that you're on my email list because in February, before Valentine's Day, Galentine's Day, I will be releasing a very large document spreadsheet of um, recommended smut. Myself and Abby of Goliath Frog Crafts and um, Caitlin of KB Web, we are going to be, we are three very avid smut readers. Um, we're picking our favorites from certain genres and we're going to compile a pretty big list for y'all. So um, it is not the end all be all list. There are other amazing lists out there. These are just some of our favorites and each of us kind of really enjoys the very specific genres in addition to like all genres. Um, so I, I think there'll be a little something for everyone. I'll, I'll hold off. I could keep going. I could talk about this all day. Let me let y'all know what I'm reading right now. Actually, I do have one more thing to say. <laughs> um, I'm an audiobook gal too. Uh, it took me a really long time to see if I liked audiobooks. And the first audiobook that I was actually able to get into was um, one of the Harry Potters. This was like four years ago. Um, somebody suggested read listening to a book that I already knew well. 
um, and finding a narrator that I like because I could not get into them. So that was one of the first ones that I was like, oh, I do think I like this. And then the second book that I ever listened to that I was like, yep, I, I can do this was Stalking Jack the Ripper. I can't think of Carrie Maniscalco. There we go. Carrie Maniscalco. Um, oh, she has some amazing book. Kingdom of the Wicked. That's all I'll say. Okay. Anyways, um, audiobook listening is absolutely reading. Don't let anybody tell you differently. If you listen to a book, you have read the book. It's a great way to consume books if you need to keep your hands busy, like if you are a knitter or crocheter or you just want to. Highly recommend audio. And on that spreadsheet that I was telling y'all about, we are going to have a section like that says whether we read the book or listened to it because again all three of us also do audiobooks in addition to just reading our smut. Now what am I reading right now? Well I'm so glad that you asked. Where is my phone? It has my the book on it. Hold please. I just didn't want to get the author's name wrong. She's a new to me author. The book that I am currently reading and I am absolutely loving it. It is laugh out loud funny. Um I have not gotten to the spice yet, but I have been told it is very good. It is a book called That Time I Got Drunk and Saved a Demon. <laughs> it's um, in the fantasy romantic realm. Um, there's obviously a demon involved and the author is Kimberly Lemming. I love the main character. Her name is Cinnamon. Um, I also really love that this book features a a uh, black female main character. She is gorgeous and powerful. She <laughs> is so funny. Um, the world building is very good. It's very um, easy to understand and believable if you've read any um, fantasy books. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really enjoying it. I love the narrator. Oh, can I see who the narrator is on here? I'll pop it in. But the narrator is also very good. I think I'm about to get to a spicy scene. I am in chapter, I just finished chapter five and it feels like the spice is about to happen. So yeah, fairly, fairly early on in the book, which is always a good thing in my opinion. A book that I just finished and I highly recommend if you're still in the Christmassy mood is Love Light Farms by Boris, or I'm sorry, BK Borison. This was really cute. The spice was, I mean, there's a couple, um, I, I don't mean to make that face. Like I just, I like a lot of spice in my stories. This spice was good, but there wasn't very much of it. And it was also kind of on the tamer side. Um, ugh, but still, still very good. Very cute um, friends to lovers story about a Christmas tree farm. It's a feel good one. It's not gonna, it's not gonna make you sob. It's not, there's no huge drama involved. It's just kind of like a light romance. I mean, there's still miscommunication, which is not my favorite tool that people employ in stories, but um, it, it's really good. It's very cute. And then I'm gonna give y'all one more rec on here just because it made me squeak earlier, but Carrie Maniscalco's Kingdom of the Wicked, oh, it's honestly like top three for me. The audiobook especially. Um, the narrator is sensational in my opinion. And I love that in the story, they add some really creepy sound effects. Um, book one is a little creepy. It's not scary, but it, it does have some creepy vibes. It's witches and demons. Um, there's a murderer. Uh, it's, it's very cool. And, um, yeah, I love it. I don't want to say too much. I, I think it's best read at Halloween. <laughs> I do a reread each year um, at Halloween and I think it's amazing, but you don't have to read it at Halloween. It will make you crave pasta and wine. I'm not kidding. Make sure you have those like in stock at your house because you're gonna need it. All right, I feel like I've been talking about books for this whole time. This is not a bookstagram or a, a book vlog, I promise. Um, but there's one more book and it's not smut related at all that I am reading and um, I think this kind of ties into my mental health and self-love a little bit uh, in a very nerdy way. Um, I have started reading The Night School by Maya Toole. I saw some reviews for this book on some of my witchy 
Instagrams and websites that I follow. Um, and people had really good things to say about it. Honest to God, I feel like I am Hermione from Hogwarts. Like this book has my inner nerd and my inner child so excited. Um, it, it reads kind of like a textbook, but it's a magical textbook. So if you've ever been interested into getting into um, or learning about, you know, magic in life and divination and um, crystals and things like that, this is a really good text to check out. Um, I think it's mostly focusing on like the energy magic is all around us kind of aspect. Um, the really cool thing, the author asks you to do your lessons at night away from electricity, away from the things of man, if possible. Um, and you get homework assignments after each lesson. So I just started this and I, I was smiling the whole time. Um, it felt like my letter to Hogwarts had finally arrived. <laughs> like, it was really fun. So um, yeah, if you're into learning about lessons in moonlight magic and the mysteries of being human, I so far recommend it after only the first lesson or two, but it's pretty fun. Let's talk yarny things. When I was originally envisioning this vlog, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna have so much to talk about and like finished objects and blah, blah, blah. And I started to feel so overwhelmed by what I should share with y'all. Um, like I said, this being a more holistic vlog, I am trying to keep the time down. I could wax poetic about yarn all day. Um, and there's so many different things. Like there's some really incredible patterns that are out there. There's tests that I'm testing for other designers. Um, there's a design that I'm going to have coming up soon. Um, different projects that I'm working on that are like selfish knits or things that I'm doing for my Kofi, which here's plug for Kofi. I'm about to have a um, finished object with them. So if you want behind the scenes into my life and extra tutorials, um, cocktail recipes, uh, joining a discord so that you can chat with myself and other members of the Kofi 24 seven, highly recommend heading over to Kofi. The link is below and um, becoming a member of the Knitting Tipsy Kofi. We have a fun time there. Okay, little shameless plug. <laughs> it's just so much that I could potentially talk to y'all about. And, and I, I kept putting this off because I'm like, I don't know what to focus on. I need something that I can, you know, just talk about for a couple minutes, you know, 15 minutes. And so I panicked and then I realized there is actually something that I really wanna to talk to y'all about. And it is self-promotion and that's great too. It is January. Um, and in January, the holidays are over and I feel like people get into a little bit of a slump. You know, maybe you're still carrying some festive spirit from the winter holidays, but it gets cold and it stays dark and you're cold and it's dark and then February comes and it's still cold and it's still dark and it just seems like spring and summer are so far away. Well, I did this last year and it was a big hit. So I've decided to bring it back and do it again. But starting at the end of January, I am hosting again the Fuck Winter Make Along. I do not like winter. I moved to Florida because I dislike winter so much. I don't like being cold. I love being warm. My favorite place is the beach. Um, I would sip cocktails in a tropical paradise every day if I could. So that's, that's just what I crave, <laughs> especially in the winter. Um, and I think there are some other people that even if you like winter, there gets to be a point where you're like, fuck winter. So this make along is to help you beat those winter blues. Um, it is where a time where you can cast on for your spring break makes, your summer makes, anything that is bright or cheery or feels summery to you, you can cast it on and start working on it at the end of January. This is a very low key make along. Um, really all you have to do to join is cast on a project that is springy summery and I'm not gonna police that however you feel is spring or summer, whatever you want to define as spring or summer. If it is a big old shawl, like a, a chunky shawl, but you're like, it has bright colors and reminds me of spring, excellent. If it's a coat 
because even in spring and summer where you live, it's chilly. That's cool. Like <laughs> whatever you want to consider um, a a summer remake is totally fine by me. I'm just hoping that it helps you feel cheery during uh, the darker days, the colder days of the year. So um, I will have prizes again this year. I'm so, so excited. I reached out to um, some small businesses here in Florida and some warm weather makers that I know. And I think I have some really badass prizes this year. Enter again, follow me, cast on a project and use the hashtag um, FWinterMakeAlong. Every time you post on Instagram, it enters you into the drawing for one of the prizes. Um, you do not have to finish. If you don't finish, that's okay, that's life. I don't want anybody to stress over it. I hope like if you're going on a spring break that it'll kind of motivate you to, oh yeah, I wanna finish this make for spring break or you'll get it done by summer. But um, the make along will run until, I think it's March 15th. It's the Friday before the first day of spring. Um, so that's going to give us, I think, six or six to eight weeks, somewhere in there. I feel like I want to say seven, but I'm not sure. So six to eight weeks, um, it's going to give us for the make along. If you need some suggestions, I will be putting up reels and posts, um, with some projects that I think could be really great. I'm hoping to do a blog post with that. Like some of my favorite spring and summer makes from the past year up until now. Um, I think I have one from last year. You can go on to knittingtipsy.com and check out my blog to see if I'm lying or not. <laughs> um, I think lots of my patterns are perfect for the fuck winter make along. And in fact, this should be posted before my birthday. On January 14th, my birthday, I will be turning 36. I am having a 36% off sale on all of my patterns on Ravelry and knittingtipsy.com. So if you'd really been wanting to grab a pattern or one of my patterns or multiple of my patterns, this is a really great time to do it. I'll be putting a discount code up soon. It goes to my email subscribers and to my Kofi. So make sure you're on one of those and you'll be able to shop for only 24 hours. So there's my another shameless self-promotion, but it does not have to be my pattern. Like I said, it can be absolutely anything. And I do think the prizes are pretty awesome. Additionally, I throw some fun goodies out there. Um, I will have a tropical playlist. So if you are at home and you just, ugh, you need something to cheer you up, um, I've got some tropical tunes coming your way on Spotify. Last year, I put together a tropical movie playlist if you need to watch something to kind of get you in the, in the summery mood. I've got you there. I'll probably be adding to it more this year. And of course, I'll be sending out some beachy cocktails. We'll, we'll get you feeling, we'll get you vibing with the summer. And you know, winter never lasts forever. So fuck winter, it's great and all, but um, for, my, for my summer babes out there, I got you. I think myself, I am gonna be, well, I have a new design that's gonna be coming. Um, it is, it's a beachy make, but it, it might not be what you're thinking. It's a, it is definitely made for like Florida winters. Um, but I still feel like it's very beachy and it'll be perfect for spring, spring especially. Um, I also think I am going to cast on one of my very first patterns, it, not my very, not one of my very first, my very first pattern, the tan and tipsy top. I'll pop in a picture here. I have been wanting to make another version of the tan and tipsy top for a long time. I think I cast it on last year or the year before with the yarn that I wanna use, but I didn't even glance at the pattern because I'm like, I know my design. Um, yeah, I used the wrong size needles. My tension is a little tighter now than whenever I first designed. It was comically small. So um, I frogged that and laughed and actually looked at the pattern and was like, oh yeah, I remember that now. I do think I'm gonna make myself a new tan and tipsy top. Um, I also am probably gonna make myself another Florida Bay bikini. Um, that is, oh, I can't say my, I, I love all of my patterns the same, but it is my oh, current, current only knit bikini design. Um, and I do just love how the fabric lays on it. Um, I've made a thong version of it 
just with some some tweaks to the back of the bottoms um, and I think I might make another one in a black all black bikini so yes everybody needs a little sexy black bikini in their lives I think the uh, winner for last year was definitely the Shell Yeah Tankini. If you are somebody who's not into teeny weeny bikinis, that is totally okay. Um, my Shell Yeah Tankini, it is, I think, a very clever design. And there is a lot that you can do with it, a lot of room for... Uh, modifications. So if you want, like, you really don't like your stomach covered, or I'm sorry, you really don't like your stomach uncovered, you can make it a lot longer. Um, it has really good chest support for my, my bigger um, breasted gals. And the bottoms are a lot of fun too. It's a choose your own adventure. You can go thong, you can go full coverage. Um, again, you could make it high waisted, you can make it low rise really whatever you want. It is a made to measure pattern, which I think is really awesome because your body is unique and wonderful and you can make a bikini that perfectly fits you. Those would be like my suggestions if you're looking for something, you know, to make. So stay tuned for the fuck winter make along. I talk a lot. Last thing that I want to be doing on these vlogs is sharing <laughs> some more um, about my life. I'm hoping to have um, little snippets of like either a really cool activity that I did with my husband or some fun b-roll footage of days at the beach, um, Florida life, a particular trip we took, etc, etc, something really cool we did at home. However, my husband and I have been sick with COVID since we got home from Christmas. We only just started feeling better a few days ago. So I was like, do I do I show more Vlogmas stuff? You can go check out the Vlogmas. So I was trying to decide, what do I show y'all? Then I thought, where, what have I been doing the majority of my time? Spending it here in my office. And I don't know if you are a little bit of like a nebby nose, a voyeur like me, that you like to see inside people's homes and like where they're working and where they get their shit done. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take you on a little tour of my office. Um, I spend most of my time in here. Knowing that I was gonna film made me tidy up a bit. So thank you for that because <laughs> The office is clean it is honestly a place I want to be so much more so let me take you on a tour okay y'all I am gonna let you know that there is it's not a flashing light in real life but for whatever reason my camera is doing it it's on these palm trees back here so if you are sensitive to um, flashing lights you might want to skip this section um, I'm gonna try to pull the curtain shut but honestly I think you might still be able to see it so um, this is my office. Let me shut this curtain for y'all. Oh, yeah, you can still see it a little bit. I'm sorry. I'll keep that in mind for next time, but voila. <laughs> Back out here. This is my little space um, that I love very much. It's this is it clean, yes. <laughs> it's a little cluttered and crowded, but honestly, that's how my brain functions. So, um, we'll start with where you come in. Hi. <laughs> my husband has done so much of the revamping of my office um, this year, and he made me these hooks for all of my beautiful hand knit and crochet shawls. So, I have, is this plugged in? Yeah. So I really do love my shawl wall. Um, I know Ashley of Montana Crochet has one. I think Brit of Not Bad Brit has one. So many people had these gorgeous shawl walls and I was like, I want one too. Oh, I think we have a visitor. Hi, buddy. Yeah. I know, is it almost time for something? See here, it's almost time. Go ahead. What? Can you let mommy finish, please? Okay. Our guest has left. Um, all right, let's start over here then, after the shawl wall. So here is the mess. <laughs> Part of the mess that I am hiding. This is my closet 
It's got lots of storage, lots of yarn. A lot of the hand dyed is in there. Um, I have a whole bin for um, Brie, the Little Wolf Knits yarn. Um, some projects that I need to uh, put in measurements and vlog about. A whole bin of things I need to get rid of. My great Grammy case spinning wheels. One of these days I'll get back into spinning. Um, there's sewing things in here. I am not a sewist, but I want to be. So, you know, we kind of just hide the mess there. And then, oh, look, more yarn. <laughs> this is more of my big, big store brands. Like, there's some Lion brand here. There's a lot of Hobie. Um, there's some We Are Knitters. Uh, the Sh Lily Sugar and Cream. Um, this area right here, this clusterfuck. This is all whips. I am not a monogamous maker. <laughs> At any one time, I usually have, I try to keep it to like five or less active whips, but some of them go into hibernation from time to time. So I think at last count there were eight here and some of them are just bigger projects. So <laughs> they're all supposed to fit into a bin. <laughs> They've exploded out of it. Um, my husband also made me for some of my, um, fixed needles. And yes, these are Tunisian crochet hooks. Do I know how to Tunisian crochet? No, but I'm going to learn <laughs> one of these days. This was my favorite purchase of, no, it still is because I purchased it of 2023. I sit on this damn, it's my throne, honestly, because that looks like doesn't it look like a little throne? I love sitting here and listening to my smut books. I love sitting here and watching vlogs and movies. Um, I really love my little couch and Rudy likes to sit next to me on it. So definitely my one of my favorite spaces. Over here we have some um, knit and crochet books and some witchy books. This is my desk, which this is actually very clean for my desk. Guys, look, it's Grammy K and little Chelsea and my brother, my little, well, he's my big brother, but there he is when he is little. And that spinning wheel is in the closet. So Grammy K passed away in 2021, um, but I know she's here with me and very proud of me. She was the OG maker and taught me everything I know. So this is where all the computer work happens. This was a Christmas gift this year. Honestly, I've used it every day once I started feeling better. So I think I'm on like day six or seven. I easily go for an hour walking on this with my whips. It like the time flies by and I can look out my window. Um, I, I actually really like knit walking and crochet walking. It's so amazing if you are a maker who sits on your ass all day like I have. Um, it, it does feel really good to to move. And I'm hoping, I am 5'10", I'm hoping I can fandangle like something to make this desk a little higher or to put something on it for my computer. As it is, it's not super comfortable to type on it. I have to kind of hunch over a little bit. Um, but if I get that, I, I mean, I'll just be on here all day. There's no stopping me. I'm going to be a walking fool. Um, if you're interested in the, uh, it's considered like a mini treadmill, I think. It's the Eurevo 3-in-1. I have a link in my Amazon storefront. Um, that's where my mom purchased it from. Um, I, I really love it. I will. It's sturdy as shit. <laughs> And it can go up to eight miles per hour. So I used to love jogging and running. I ran a half marathon once. It's something that I'm considering getting back into. And if I do want to, I have my little, my little baby treadmill. I will say it is heavy. It is not one of the super duper easily foldable, packable, movable walking pads that I've seen a lot of the yarn girlies have. Um, I think it weighs 80 to 90 pounds. <laughs> It does have wheels. Um, I am able to, you know, jostle it around and get it where I need to be, but it mostly stays right here because it's, she, she is sturdy bitch. We love her though. Over here on the right, 
this table my husband made because he's amazing. Um, this is where if I need to spread out, especially for pattern work, laying things out, taking measurements, I do over here. Um, the rare times that I sew, it all happens over here. I really do want to get into sewing more. I think I could be a good sewist. Maybe. We'll see. But this is also where I do all my witchy shit. <laughs> um, I like to read my tarot here in the mornings. Um, if you are also a tarot girly, I have tons of tarot freebies. I talk about tarot a lot in my Kofi group. We just started doing um, a tarot pool of the week. And I think I might even be offering um, maybe in February some limited uh, tarot readings. So if you are interested in having your tarot cards read, um, you'll need to join Kofi. But I think it could be really fun. My husband also made me these shelves, these hanging shelves. Like, isn't he fucking awesome? I think I'll keep it. And then this is the shipping station. I have my little printer. This is a Munbin. It is in my Amazon storefront. And oh my gosh, y'all, this little printer has saved me so much grief and heartbreak. Um, I used to print all of my stickers off one at a time or do them by hand. It was so stressful with the big printer. This little guy, she's amazing and she's pink. I have a lot of my shipping materials in here and over here. And then here there's more witchy stuff and a lot of the materials that I use to make my sea witch soaks. I do sell wool wash. I haven't had any in the shop in a while, but um, coming soon there will be an update if, you, if you've been wanting to snag a few bottles of some magical wool wash filled with good intentions for your makes. So yeah, that's my little office. I absolutely love spending time in here. I feel creative in here. This feels like a cozy little home. And um, sorry again for the flashing lights, but I do have a palm tree right outside of here. It gets great light. Um, the dog likes to be in here with me. So yeah, that's my workspace. All right, y'all. Let, let me finish the last sip of this drink here. I do love like all the glitter that's still in the glass. Makes me super happy. <laughs> Don't let anyone dull your sparkle. Thank you so much for joining me on this first episode of um, the Knitting Tipsy vlog. If there's something that you really liked, please let me know. If there's something that you wish I'd talk more about, let me know. Um, if you have ideas for things that you wanna see, that I didn't get to touch upon, also let me know that. Hoping to have one of these out each month with kind of a recap of that month's, all of those topics. <laughs> I promise not to wax as poetic about smut next time, unless y'all are into it. And I will have some really exciting yarny content for y'all come February. I'm gonna have probably several finished objects to show y'all. I'm gonna have some new designs out lots of fun things. And speaking of all the yarny stuff, um, at the end of this month and at the end of each month, I'm going to have an episode called Show Us Your Knits. That is going to be entirely yarny related. Um, I'm going to talk about the finished objects that I finished up from December, my super soft coat, my second AV sweatshirt that I tested, a test that I'm doing right now, a design that I'm getting ready to finish up, a new design that I've started that I'm hoping I will have finished up by then. That um, episode, that series is going to be all yarn related. So if you're not as interested in the smut and the self-love and everything else, you can at least look forward to that. And, and, <laughs> before you go, um, I do think that I will be doing Whiskey and Whips this month. Um, I'm hesitant to say the date. I just need to confirm with the person that I think is going to go live with me. I've missed having like people get drunk with me while we talk about yarn. It's a good time. Um, that will be in the evening Eastern time on a Wednesday. We do Whiskey and Whips Wednesday. I used to do them on Instagram, hoping to bring them here um, to YouTube. You can join us live. 
ask your questions, join in the shenanigans, pour a cocktail, bring your whip. It should be a good time. Anyways, thank you all so much again. Um, I can already feel like the nerves have left. I don't know why I was so nervous at the start of this. I talk on camera all the time, but you know, when you try something new, as Gigi would say, it's not hard, it's new. So I'm sure these episodes will hopefully get better and better as we go. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. But for real, it, um, it really helps me out. I'm hoping to get my channel monetized. So if you really like it, maybe tell a friend. And I will see y'all on Instagram, on Ko-fi, um, or just next month. Thank y'all so much. Bye.